In this video, I'm going to work through the exam style question we see here. And as we'll soon realize, this question will teach us how to calculate the area of a circular segment. Now, we're told, rounding your answer to three significant figures, find the shaded area. And of course, we're given this illustration, where we can see we're dealing with a circular sector, whose radius is 7 centimeters, and whose angle at the center is 50 degrees. And the shaded area we need to find is this gray area right here. And as we can see, this corresponds to a circular segment. And to calculate this area, which I'll go ahead and call capital A, it helps me to draw little illustrations that summarize the method. The first thing I'll do is calculate the area of this circular sector that I'm hovering over right now. And so to remind myself of that, I'll draw a circular sector, looking something like this. There we go. The angle here is 50 degrees, and the radius is 7 centimeters. And I'll then take away from that the area of the triangle OAB. In other words, I'm going to subtract the triangle OAB, like so. Now, triangle OAB has an interior angle here of 50 degrees, and two of its side lengths are 7 centimeters long. There we go. And so subtracting this triangle from this circular sector, we'll be left with the area of the circular segment. In other words, this will equal to the area we need to find. Okay, so that's how we're going to calculate the area of this circular segment. And so to move forward, let's remind ourselves of the formula for calculating the area of a circular sector, as well as the formula involving sine for calculating the area of a triangle and I'll write those formula in green in the upper right-hand corner. So let's see, the area, capital A, of a circular sector is equal to theta over 360 times pi r squared. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that formula. There we go. And I'll write area of circular sector. So I'll just write area of circular sector. And just to make sure that this formula is understood, if I quickly draw a circular sector like this, there we go, the r that's being squared inside this formula corresponds to the radius of the circular sector. So we'd have an r here and another r right here. And in fact, I'll write that other r, there we go. And the theta that we have on the numerator here corresponds to the angle inside the sector right here. Next, we need the formula for the area of a triangle involving sine. And so that would be this formula right here. I'll say that the area A is equal to one half times A times B times sine of the angle C. And again, I'll go ahead and box that formula. There we go. That's the area of a triangle. Okay, and just as I did for the previous formula, let me quickly make a little illustration to make sure that we understand how to read and use this formula. So let's see, I'll draw a very generic triangle right next to it, like so. The A and B that we have here are any two side lengths inside this triangle. So I'll say A is here, and I'll say B is right there. So those are the two side lengths we see here. The angle, capital C, that's inside the sign, would then be the angle between the two side lengths, A and B, which we usually write outside of the triangle at the vertex right here. That's the angle C. And so looking at this generic triangle here, as well as the triangle we have in our problem, it's quite clear that we can use this formula. Indeed, we have two side lengths and the angle in between them. Okay, all of that being said, let's use these two formula to calculate the area of the segment. So let's see, this would equal to the area of the circular sector. And so remember, that's theta over 360 times pi r squared. And in our case, theta would be 50 degrees. And so I'll go ahead and write that that's equal to 50 over 360 times pi r squared, where r in this case is 7 centimeters. So that's pi times 7 squared. I now take away from that the area of the triangle. And using the formula we've just seen, that becomes 1 half times the product of the two side lengths, so that's 7 times 7 times sine of the angle in between the two side lengths. So in our case, that's sine of 50 degrees. 
That's right, right, sine of 50 degrees. And there we go. All we have to do now is type all of this into our calculators and calculate. So let's go ahead, moving over to my calculator, which you can see here, I'll go ahead and type all of this. And for this first product here, I'll type the 50 over 360 inside a pair of parentheses. So I open up a pair of parentheses and I type 50 divided by 360. I exit those parentheses and I multiply that by pi. Now on this calculator, pi has its own button, so I click there and I click on pi times seven squared. So that's seven raised to the power of two. Okay, I now take away from that one half times seven times seven. Now one half is the same thing as 0 0.5, which is easier to type, so I'll just type 0 0.5 times seven times seven times sine of 50 degrees. Now remember to make sure that your calculator is set into degrees. And on this calculator, you can see that in the upper right hand corner here. And now I type sine of 50. I exit those parentheses and looking at all that, I'm happy with what I see. And so I click on enter and we're done. This circular segments area, or I could also say the shaded area we had to find is equal to 2.61219 square centimeters. And remembering that we had to round our answer to three significant figures, I look at the fourth significant figure I see here, which is two, and two is less than five, so I don't round this one up. And I can state that the area is equal to 2.61 square centimeters. And in parentheses, I'll specify that we round it to three significant figures. And we're done. That's the area of the circular segment. And there we go. Now the method we've just seen will always work as soon as we have to calculate the area of a circular segment. So make sure to keep this method in mind. That being said, that's it for this tutorial.